congratulations. Kümme päeva on Eestil olnud uus presidendi prooa. Jeeva Ilves, kelle karjäär on siiani tähendanud varjuspüsimist ning riigisaladuste hoidmist, sattus nüüd abi elludes Eesti presidendiga suure avalikuse tähelepanu alla. Hoolimata oma uuest tähtsast positsioonist on Jeeva otsustanud jääda salapäraseks. Naaberriikide Eesti ja Läti liidu võtab hästi kokku praegune Läti välisminister Edgar Srinkevits. There are two big events, I believe. Here in Latvia we are trying to get a new government. Yeah, we are. for a month or so. And, and you are trying to figure out who is she. So at least two countries are busy. <laughs> Läti välisminister Edgar Srinkevits on üks Jeeva lähedastes sõpradest, kes oli kutsutud külalisena ka Eesti kõige tähtsamasse pulma. Et aimu saada, kes on ikkagi meie uus presidendi prooa, palus radar Jeeva lähimatel sõpradel naisest rääkida. Uh, we really became very good friends. Uh, I met her when both of us worked in Baku. I have worked with Jeeva for, I think, uh, 18, 17 years in different capacities. Uh, uh, I have worked with Jeeva uh, since 2006 at the Ministry of Defence and then we also became close friends. Actually, the fight for democracy brought us together, if I could say so. Nii siis, sõitsime Läti pealinna Riiga, et kohtuda seal Jeeva sõpradega, kes teda väga hästi tunnevad ning kes aitaksid aru saada, mis sugune inimene on Eesti vabariigi esimene leedi Jeeva Ilves. Very easy to communicate, uh, easy going, uh, friendly, uh, makes contacts very easily. Janis Saarts on mees, kes juhib Riias asuvat NATO strategilise kommunikatsiooni kompetentsikeskust. Nende tutvus Jeevaga ulatub aastasse 1997, mil Jeeva 20-aastase üliõpilasena läks tööle välisministeriumisse. Uh, when she started in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, her area of expertise uh, was uh, close to what I was working in the Ministry of Defence, that was... Uh, NATO issues. Well, th- that was a different time. It was um, second half of 90s and, and, and life was, I would say, a bit more tough. Uh, uh, making a living uh, was uh, more tough and the opportunities were bigger. So that was not unique at that time for people straight from the university or even while in the university to start to work in the government, in the ministries and actually get qu- pretty quickly in, in important Places. Ajakirjanik Kunta Slooga, kes praegu töötab Läti televisiooni kultuuriprogrammide hankejuhina, tunneb Jeevat samuti väga ammusest ajast. Nende tutvusest arenes välja lähedane sõprus, mis tõttu Kunta oli ka üks neist, kes Jeeva ja Toomas Hendrik Ilvese pulmas käis. I have been covering foreign politics for many years and I think it was already 12 years ago. I was covering a lot of stories about the democracy movement in Belarus. And Eva at the same time working for uh, for some NGOs and also Ministry of Foreign Affairs, she was supporting movement in Belarus too. So I would say that then we were quite young and quite naive and we were hoping that we will help overthrow Mr. Lukashenko. Although he is still in power, I think those, you know, like uh, those values, fight for democracy, this is something which both of us have kept deep in our hearts and uh, still doing some other things and jobs, we are still actually doing this. On jäänud suurema tähelepanuta, et Eesti presidendi pulmas käis ka Läti välisminister Edgar Srinkevits. Et tegub olnud lihtsalt diplomaatilise sammuga, vaid aastate aastate pikkuse sõprusega, sellest annab aimu kas või see, et välisminister leiab oma tihedas graafikus aega ka radari jaoks, et rääkida oma heas sõbrast Jeevast. Well, I know Jeeva for about 15 years or even a little bit more. Uh, she was working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, she was working in the department that was responsible for security policy issues and integration in NATO and I was working in the defense ministry so and as this was the time of um, let's say uh, getting into both organizations the European Union and NATO uh, we had a very close cooperation 
Sarmi Teelerte on praegune poliitik ja endine Läti kultuuriminister. Enne poliitikasse siirdumist juhtis ta 18 aastat Läti suurimat päevalehte Tiena. Sarmite on samuti Eevale nii lähedane sõber, et oli pulma kutsutud. I know we were from 2009. Uh, we were brought together by uh, Edgar Srinkevich. Uh, he was uh, head of president's office at that time. Uh, so, and the idea was that uh, uh, we should go to Georgia uh, to understand media problems there, uh, to talk with politicians, media people, NGOs, and come out with some conclusions how to, how to improve uh, editorial independence, uh, professionalism. She was my left and right hand for the project, uh, and uh, for me, uh, it was important uh, to understand, to feel that she is a person with very strong values, with um, strategic thinking, and very good uh, organizational skills. I think uh, for her job uh, dealing with the uh, international affairs, dealing with security policy was, uh, has always been also a passion. I, I don't think she is a kind of um, a person who is very much uh, looking into the you know, quick uh, career. She, is, she, I think, gets more uh, satisfaction from the results of the job she is doing. So uh, uh, I think uh, the basic idea back at, at that time was to get Latvia into NATO and that was her ambition. Jeevale on omistetud medal Läti NATOga liitumise edendamise eest ning president Valdis Sadlers andis talle riikliku audasu NATO peakohtumise korraldamise eest Riias. Jeeva sõprade hulka kuulub ka tšehhi poliitik Aleksander Vondra, kes on olnud tšehis nii asepeaminister, välisminister kui ka kaitseminister. Hetkel on Vondra aktiivsest poliitikas taandunud ning tegeleb oma maamajas kirjatööga. Radariga vestleb mees läbi Skype'i oma praha kontorist. Well, I know Eva very well. I, I, I had a privilege to work with her when she was in charge of uh, the public diplomacy during uh, the time of the Riga's uh, NATO summit, so to 2006, I guess it was. And I have to tell you, uh, she's a great woman. Vondra tunneb ühtlasi ka meie presidenti juba ajast, mill Toomas Endrik Ilves oli veel välisminister. Of course, I know Estonian president, I know Thomas, he's a Thomas for us. Riia kesklinnast pisu teemal, kohe üle silla asub pealt näha tavaline maja. Siin valgete seinte vahel tegutseb aga NATO strateegilise kommunikatsiooni kompetentsikeskus. See on keskus, mille loomisel on Eeval olnud väga suur roll. Et aru saada, millega siin tegeletakse, palume asja selgitama Eesti mehe, kolonel Aivar Jaeski, kes töötab siin asedirektorina. Me elame infoajastus, kus on, on tulnud kasutusele täiesti uued dimensioonid, uued platformid, internet, Ja, ja neid dimensioone, neid, neid platforme kasutatakse ka pahade poolt. Ja, ja kuidas selles uues keskkonnas orienteeruda ja, ja kuidas adekvaalselt käituda, see on, ongi see, millega, millega meie tegeme. No, Eeval oli väga suur roll, väga oluline roll. Nii olulise keskuse loomise ülesanne ja anta mitte, mitte juhuslikule inimesele. Nii et ta on kindlasti Läti kaitseministeriumi poolt tunnustatud ekspert. Ja, ja tema ülesanne oli, oli luua selle keskuse profiil, läbi rääkida NATOga, mis, mida NATO ootab sellest keskusest ja, ja tema roll oli ka kaasata kohe alguses teised riigid, kes tahaksid selles keskuses osaleda ning peale selle siis loomulikult seadusloome ettevalmistamine, personalivalik, eelarve planeerimine, tööülesannete kirjutamine. Uh, I think that uh, she is also very intelligent lady because uh, she has been working for Foreign Affairs Ministry 
for defense ministry in the positions where uh, her primary responsibility was and well, still is to work on, on issues that uh, are security policy, I already mentioned public diplomacy, uh, where she also was very much responsible for preparing uh, speeches, uh, also political uh, documents and essays. And she is actually very effective in putting ideas into practice. We had a task to develop a new uh, cyber strategy for Latvia and it was a, a very difficult task. A lot of uh, ministries, a lot of uh, interests in, in, in developing that uh, and it was not going very well and then I gave that task to Eva and her team to actually facilitate and, uh, and make that a, a good document and a document that everybody agrees. And through different kinds of, um, sort of elements, meeting people, you know, personally addressing, she managed to come up with a document that was both visionary, but which was also very important, people agreed to. So once again, a very able to accommodate people at the same time, not sacrificing the the overall idea and, and I think that is the first this kind of document that was made and it was actually her, her sort of success. Well, um, when we were working to prepare a uh, NATO summit, which was at that time probably the biggest event in the uh, Latvian history after regaining of independence and actually it was also a very symbolic event because it was the first uh, NATO summit uh, in the territory of so-called former Soviet Union so it had also a bit symbolic role. I would say that uh, uh, she was very very active and energetic to organize Riga conference where she, by the way, also had a very uh, good relationship with President Illis, who was also uh, was there and uh, who since then have been frequent uh, attender of, of, of Riga conference. I was her boss at that time. I can tell you that uh, usually uh, when she comes with great idea, your first reaction is no. Then she comes another time, your another reaction is no. And the third time you find yourself very surprised saying yes. And you really don't risk to argue with her. How do you describe Eva's work at Minister of Defence now? Uh, her current job is uh, head of uh, National uh, Cyber Security Policy Division. Uh, so, as I understand, uh, she intends to continue this work. Uh, this division uh, is uh, quite small, so uh, it, she has a lot of work to do and she has to be very engaged. And also this division is directly subordinated to the State Secretary. So it shows uh, how much importance uh, Latvia and Ministry of Defence attaches uh, to this topic and uh, to the work that this division uh, is doing. I think. Uh, the other part which keeps us together is that Eva is just a very great friend with a very good sense of humor, uh, with this, I would call it, show de vivre, you know, like traveling, uh, books, cinema, all those things which are very common uh, for us too. Uh, we really became very good uh, friends and uh, time to time, in summertime, when I'm going somewhere to abroad, uh, she took care of my house and my cat. So, <laughs> the cat was very happy uh, and e even fattier when I came. So, you, Eva is a person to whom you can trust and entrust. I'll tell a story from when I met her in Baku. You know, Latvians celebrate Midsummer Night quite passionately. And, um, and there are certain traditions around it all. And the two of us decided that we would create a Midsummer Night, uh, basically in my flat, right by the Caspian Sea. And uh, uh, she invited some people, I invited some people, but the tiny little extra that she brought along was that she found daisies 
to put in our hair to make a wreath, uh, which is very difficult in June in uh, the Caspian area, which shows really a compassion for uh, what is going on, for the festivities that are there, and try to make things good in details that are very appropriate for an occasion. <laughs> Do you also have that kind of story? Of course, about you know, she's now the wife of the president, so <laughs> <laughs> we have to be diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> she is uh, a very uh, honest person, first of all, uh, sometimes very direct and frank. Uh, she is also very much uh, caring for her friends. She will be always there if you need uh, help. She will be with you in good or not so good times. Actually, Eva is great on on uh, on, uh, on just dragging yourself in some very good experiences. For example, it was already some years ago. We were all, all both of us were assigned to work in Brussels, and so and both of us were assigned to work in Brussels. She for uh, MOD and uh, me for uh, then newspaper Diana as a correspondent. And then uh, there was national holiday. And, uh, but I had to do uh, some work to do, so I decided that I will write, uh, sit at my home during this whole weekend for four days and I will write my stories. But then Eva calls and she's so convincing and she says we, want to sh we should go to Normandy, you know. You've never been to Normandy. You will do this job, you know, like later you will come home and during your weekdays you will finish it. And she's so convincing, you know. And she, uh, she is so convincing on telling the story how good and great our trip to Normandy is going to be that I just say yes and go. <laughs> uh, but I've said no to uh, like three or five other friends who have invited me to spend this long week and I've told you I will work, I will work. But see, Eve somehow is always convincing and she is like, like a person with a very good sense of humor, with, with really like lust for life, I would say. And so, yes, this is something uh, I will remember this trip, you know, for ends of, of my life. I think I would never remember this weekend if I would stay at home and write my stories. <laughs> she has these different uh, sides. She has the fun part and then she has the work part and you can meet uh, different Eva <laughs> each time. <laughs> the thing that comes to my mind is our trip to France when Eva was working in Brussels in our NATO mission and uh, I remember that uh, that was, I think, the time when I discovered most of her fun side. So uh, she introduced me to eating oysters. Uh, and I know that Eva is an oyster addict. And uh, ever since that trip, <laughs> I've become an oyster addict too. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I introduced Eva to the joys of uh, singing karaoke. So uh, she was actually quite shy. She wanted to try, but uh, she was not sure if that's uh, the right thing to do. <laughs> but I told her that, come on, nobody knows us here and to just, just go and do it. And uh, what was really funny and which shows her character is that I think just a couple of days after I left, uh, she called me or wrote to me that, you know, I actually went to a shop and I bought a karaoke machine. <laughs> so it shows you that uh, if she's determined and if she likes something, she always uh, gets to the end. She finishes her plans very quickly. So. Is she a good singer? Uh, she's a very fun singer. To be honest, it was years ago and I, I don't remember how well we scored. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I think we did pretty well, yes. <laughs> Oma lauluoskus sai Eeva ka pulma peol näidata, sest seal toimus omamoodi Eesti-Läti maavõistlus. President uh, organized a bit of a competition between the Latvian and the Estonian guests uh, on uh, folk songs and uh, Eva was also participating uh, in the singing, yes. Were you surprised uh, when you heard that uh, they are going to marry? Um, yes, I was a little bit surprised, uh, but I know that uh, 
it will be very good, uh, very close couple, because um, they will always have topics for both for discussions, for conversations. Um, I think that they have a lot of common interests. I started to suspect something uh, in the middle of the summer. To be honest, uh, I became aware of it uh, in uh, early autumn uh, when we hadn't seen each other with Eva for a long time. And when we met, uh, she told me uh, about it. Uh, but as I understand, uh, they started seeing each other sometime in summer uh, during the holiday period. So, uh, but then, as you know, they know each other for ages, uh, like professionally and uh, as colleagues, as friends. I did not know this uh, when I met uh, uh, your president last time. It was somewhere, somewhere in, in the summer of the last year. So uh, when somebody told me uh, this information, uh, uh, late, uh, lately last year, I was a bit surprised, uh, but look, not as uh, uh, as much. Uh, certainly, uh, I always remembered uh, um, uh, 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 Tom uh, Ilves as a you know gentleman, uh, a lion of the salons, uh, and. Uh, uh, Yeva was always a very communicative uh, uh, person, so I'm not as much. Uh, I was surprised, but not as much. From one side, I was surprised, from another, not. Because they were really close friends for many years, and everybody in her inner circle knows that, that they are friends. And you know, when you have been uh, good friends with somebody, and then there is a situation when nobody, when none of those two people have uh, other connections, then it can start quite easily. Actually, it was uh, quite funny because uh, when Eva told me, I think she expected my jaw to drop, <laughs> but it didn't. <laughs> and she kind of uh, almost asked me why you are not uh, shocked. And uh, I thought about it for a couple of seconds and I told her that I think that to me they seem such a naturally very compatible couple that it just seems so natural that uh, it doesn't surprise me somehow because they are so suitable in my opinion. What do you say for those who say that maybe this marriage has uh, come too early? Uh, if I am not wrong, uh, Eva uh, and Thomas Henrik uh, know each other from, from the middle of 90s. So, uh, therefore, I don't think that uh, it's too early. Yes, but then again, if they weren't married, then there would be all those stories about, you know, like what kind of relationship they have and all this stuff. So now it's quite clear for everybody who they are to each other. I think both uh, Mr. President uh, and Eva, both of them have very extensive, uh, intense uh, life experience. So they are both uh, capable to understand and decide what is right for them and what is best for them. Uh, I also think that if two people love each other, then they should be together. Uh, and I also think that, in my opinion, it was very uh, correct uh, from uh, the side of your president uh, to ask for Eva's hand and uh, make this uh, commitment uh, formal. I think it's a very nice and very decent and proper thing to do. Thomas Hendrik Ilvesel on varasematest abieludest kogu kolm last. Täiskasvanud poeg ja tütar ning 11-aastane tütar Kadri Keiju. Jeeval on varasematest suhetest kaks last. Teismelne poeg Ralfs ja alla kahe aastane tütar Isabella. I think that... Uh... We women in Baltics, uh, in this meaning, are quite good managers. Uh, very often we should combine, uh, so to go to it's like to 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 live through two working lives with our children and uh, our job responsibilities. Uh, you should be a good manager.
of your time. Uh, she, she has a uh, uh, good and friendly family. I know that her mother um, helps Eva uh, very much to, to take care of Isabel. Uh, she has a sister, so family can help in such situations. I think uh, Eva already has a good experience uh, because uh, she raised her son, uh, Ralphs. Uh, and uh, I remember that uh, she was working very hard at the time and she also had different postings uh, abroad. Uh, so she managed. She's a very strong woman, uh, very strong, very dedicated. And uh, some people can manage more uh, than others. And I guess she's one of those uh, who can show example of how a woman can actually, you know, be strong and survive and actually manage these things. Of course, with Isabella, it's even more difficult because now she has two underage uh, children. And uh, Eva has a lovely nanny uh, who is also helping her and her mom uh, is helping her a lot. So together with the family and with the nanny, she's managing. But of course, it's, it's, it's not easy. And yeah, especially now when she has to travel between Latvia and Estonia. Yes, it's not easy. Isabella is a beautiful baby. Uh, I happen to know the father of the child who was quite a formidable fellow as well. Um, and uh, I think that it is wonderful that Eva has this daughter uh, to as a memory of a wonderful person that she loved uh, and that loved her uh, and compliments the family with uh, Ralph's her you know first son so God willing they will all have a wonderful life together uh, Thomas Ilves as you know is uh, the daughter's godfather uh, and I'm sure will bring a lot of goodness into the family Vahetult enne aasta vahetust kirjutas Eesti Ekspress loo pealkirjaga Jeeva Kupče saladus, kus uuriti, kes ikkagi on Isabella isa. Uh, you know, I take it very personally as Isabella's godmother, because I think, uh, okay, you can sneak in uh, Eva's past, but you should respect uh, a small two years old child who has no, no relation to this marriage or, or Estonian presidency and you have to respect uh, her father who is dead and who cannot uh, who cannot uh, defend himself so this is i to my opinion this is ugliest part of all this thing you know like this marriage and i would really hope that estonian media just let this small girl who to my opinion as a godmother is one of the most beautiful and smartest girls already just let her be on her own and don't dig in her past anymore. Kuidas see käib, kui nii tähtsas institutsiooni tuleb uus inimene, et kas siis president tuleb sinu juurde ütleva, et võt, siin on tekinud meie üks tähtis tegelane, et saage tuttavaks. Lihtsalt president, president usaldab oma inimesi, kes tema lähedusest töötavad. Nii et eks ta umbes nii käiski. Kuidas Eeva ennast tunneb selles situatsioonis? Ma arvan, ta harjub sellega. It is hard actually for me to, to uh, you know, put together uh, Eva and uh, the First Lady. <laughs> uh, Why is because, this uh, well, if, if you know a person for 17 years and this is a rather different role she's been into, uh, I, I've known her than I've known her. In, uh, so it is a bit of a sort of, huh, 
she will be now a first lady. But I think uh, she is actually, and you might uh, get from the characteristics, person that uh, is ready to take the, 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 the sort of secondary role, a uh, person who is uh, very passionate about uh, the ideas and the work she does, uh, the person that is ready to, to see into the future. I think in all these combinations, in, 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 in the sort of element of the First Lady, uh, although for a very short time, uh, I think she would be very good. I don't have any uh, doubts that uh, uh, this pair uh, will be a shining uh, pair representing not just Estonia, but uh, um, uh, the Baltic states uh, uh, together. And I think you should be proud that, uh, you know, you are an open country and it's a certain expression of, 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 of the openness. I think that it will take some time to learn that. Overall, I have to say that uh, in my career for two and a half years, I was also the head of the president's office. And um, constitutionally, uh, both Latvia and Estonia roughly has the same powers and responsibilities uh, that presidents have. That, of course, is uh, a bit ceremonial role. Uh, it's a symbol of state. And I know also how difficult, actually, uh, for the First Lady uh, is to be, um, let's say, seen all the time, being all the time uh, under some scrutiny, what kind of dress you have, whether that suits you, how you smile, what you uh, do, what you say. And I think that uh, it will take a little bit, of course, time to, to adapt to that role. But I understand also that it's not going to be a long period when she's going to be the First Lady, yes you have elections? Well, I think she's, uh, she's very used to a diplomatic environment because that's her world, as you know, uh, from, from the foreign ministry. She's a very gracious person. She knows how to behave well. And I think that she also knows a lot of the stakeholders around the president of Estonia anyways. So she would have access to both the uh, politicians and other presidents of the world, as well as absolutely normal citizens of Estonia. Of course, I understand that Estonian people would like to have her more involved. But then as somebody who has been in media for whole her life as me, I would say that I think it's, you know, always those two sides. From one side, no, Estonian society, at least part of it, says that uh, it's so bad that she's not going to be involved. But if there would be this others, other, other, you know, like direction, she would start being getting involved very much. I, 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 could, I could bet that then people wouldn't like it because she's Latvian, she's foreigner, and what she's, what does she, actually understand about Estonian society or whatever. So I think, I think it's, uh, it's quite reasonable that uh, she, she is going to perform all the necessary duties, but at the same time still, uh, still tries to, to do her career. Because uh, to be honest, we all know that uh, uh, term of uh, Mr. Ilva sends in October, so and after that, she's not first lady anymore, and she she will have to return uh, to to everyday life. Well, I think that uh, she is not the person that really want to be seen as a kind of celebrity. Uh, I think that for her, of course, the issue number one was to keep up her professional career and and job. And I understand that she wants to continue working in the Defense Ministry. Um, well, of course, uh, I think it's going to be rather complicated and difficult uh, to be, let's say, seen both in Riga and in Tallinn. But uh, I also believe that uh, that role, that immediate interest that both Estonian and Latvian press had, especially when the first news broke out, I still remember that uh, here in Latvia, it took about two or three weeks to figure out who was that lady uh, having lunch with President Ilves, and I had, frankly, a little bit uh, good laugh 
uh, seeing how desperate journalists were trying to find uh, here in Latvia who is she. So I think that it was also a bit uh, the uh, specific situation if you all of a sudden come under spotlight, uh, you still need some uh, period of adaptation. I think it's uh, connected to her personality. She is someone who always has uh, avoided a very big publicity because uh, by, do by doing all the things she has done in her life, if she, she would be a different person, she could get uh, much more attention and much more publicity even in Latvia. But she is a person who wants to do her job good, who wants to spend her time as a family, and she just doesn't need this spotlight. And of course, uh, because of her job, because uh, this is something she, she treats very seriously. And I could never imagine that somebody who is responsible for cybersecurity in Latvia would go for all the media and tell something, you know, like about her weekends, her, her favorite, I don't know, types of wine or whatever else. I think that it will be very, uh hard period for Eva. Uh, in the beginning, just to understand how, how to manage uh, this new life with her small daughter, uh, son Ralph, who is uh, already a teenager and will continue uh, studies in, in Riga. Uh, she she uh, didn't give up her job in Ministry of Defense. Uh, not full-time job, but still. Uh, and as, sh as she said, uh, she had two months just to check how this new life can be managed. But uh, Eva has very good organizational skills, and I think that everything will be okay. Yes, I think it will be very difficult uh, and uh, Eva certainly recognizes that. Uh, we have briefly spoken about it. So uh, she's a little bit concerned uh, because uh, she always wants to do the job uh, the best uh, way she can. Um, so she's always fully committed and of course understanding that uh, becoming the first lady uh, gives some additional obligations and also because her husband, your president, is in a different country and also often abroad, uh, it will be a challenge. What do you say for those Estonians who say, oh, what a pity our president uh, married to a Latvian woman? Well, first of all, I think that uh and here I want to underline, it doesn't matter whether you marry Latvian or Estonian or, or British. I, mean, I think it's much more important that uh, there is uh, really uh, a good, let's say, relationship. And of course, uh, I have some friends, by the way, who have their Estonian girlfriends. Uh, so I think that uh, this is also, I uh, hear foreign minister now speaks, a good sign of uh, very close relations between our two countries. So I think that uh, uh, I can only say that uh, Estonia has gained and probably we have lost a little bit. Uh, in Latvia we love uh, Mr. Ilves very much and now we love him even more because he has married a very, very talented, beautiful and smart woman, which is Eva. And, uh, and I think um, actually by now getting to know Estonian people much better through Eva, I would say that actually we are much more closer than we could ever imagine. For example, those Vedic traditions because you are stealing brides, you are making this, these roadblocks. Because when I arrived to the wedding, I was just asking, Mr. President, do you know we have those traditions? He says, yes, we have the same ones. I have already prepared for those roadblocks. <laughs> so this is something, you know, like, actually, this is a great opportunity for both of our nations to find that we are much closer than, uh, than uh, we could ever imagine. Of course, in Latvia, we always have felt close to Estonia and throughout history we've shared a lot of similarities uh, at times um, not being distinguished between one another. So there's a, and now with 
with with this marriage. Uh, I think it is it is uh, interesting to to see how people are excited about the idea that there is this kind of extra uh, links uh, that unite uh, Latvians and Estonians. So I think uh, um, it doesn't change a lot, but it makes feel people feel better. I feel better about the relationship between Latvia and Estonia.